This is what you missed last time on ReCheck. Next up, we have one of the newest vets to join Pole Veterinary Services, Dr. Lisa Jones. She's joining us live from the clinic. Welcome, Dr. Lisa. Hello. Dr. Lisa, a big part of working at our practice is being on call for emergencies, both large and small animals. Can you tell us a little bit about how being on call works at the clinic? Sure, yeah. Um, when we lock up the clinic doors for the night, turn, turn off all the lights, um, a lot of times the animals decide they aren't quite done for the day. So we all take turns making sure that there's somebody on hand to help out if somebody needs, it, needs us. So anytime the phone rings, you never know what to expect. Right. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything from a cow that needs help calving or a colicking horse or a dog that gets injured or maybe a sick cat. We really don't know. Dr. Pohl, a lot of veterinary clinics don't accept after hours emergencies. Can you tell us why you always felt the need to respond 24 hours a day, even when you were the only vet in the practice? Well, Charles, that is because when we started here 40 years ago, I was 80% dairy. And you cannot take a dairy cow that is trying to have a calf an hour or more down the road and have somebody else help you there. So it was always here. And yes, I have had some times where you have three or four hours sleep a night and just keep going. You actually had a uh, schooling experience that was kind of different for your time, but might be relatable to a lot of people nowadays. You were homeschooled as a as a a child, is that correct? Yeah, all the way up until I went to college, I was homeschooled. A lot of kids no, are being homeschooled. So smart. Yeah, yeah. 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 So smart. yeah. Yes. A, a lot of kids are being homeschooled or learning remotely this year due to COVID-19. Were there any unique experiences you had growing up due to not going to a traditional school that maybe you could share for the other uh, children who are experiencing it now? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, I mean, a very unique experience. Um, we had a lot more flexibility in our schedule. Like, we had a really nice day outside. We could all go out and stare at flowers and identify birds for science class. Um, we were able to go on some pretty cool field trips and see a lot of the country. Um, actually, homeschooling actually didn't hurt you at all with going to colleges. You went to one of the best schools in, in the country with Cornell. Is that, that's correct, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think my education set me up pretty well to get where I want to go. And I, Cornell was my first choice for vet school and I was able to, to get in there, which was pretty amazing. So I feel blessed to have parents that were very invested in making sure I was prepared to get where I want to go. Right. Dad, Dr. Lisa came to the practice with a lot of experience working with cows. Um, how is it training a veterinarian who has a little bit more experience with the large animal side. It's very easy. I tell you, it makes it nice because, uh, don't forget, Dr. Lisa is very tiny hands and goats and sheep are large animals. And she has helped a lot of obstructural problems with goats and sheep and can do it with the little hands. Uh, so yes, I really appreciate it. I think she does a fantastic job. Uh, everybody likes her. She has a smile on the face most of the time, even though things go wrong sometimes. But that's life. Not everything is 100% better. You know, there are animals that cannot make it, and you do the best you can, and that's the main thing. Are small hands a qualification or something you look for in a vet? No, but if you look at my hands and if you look at Dr. Lisa's hands, uh, it's a lot easier for her hands to go into these small ruminants than I, my hands going in there. Well, speaking of uh, smaller, uh, large animals, Dr. Lisa, on last week's episode, we saw a case where you worked on Pepper the pig who got in a tussle with a dog. Let's take a look. Saturday on The Incredible Dr. Pole. My pig's name is Pepper the Rainbow Pig. So she got into a bit of a rumble with a dog. A feisty patient. I want to take Pepper back to the surgery ward, but Pepper does not agree with my plan. Let's everyone know who's boss. I just do what Pepper wants today. My hearing has recovered, and I hope she will too. The Incredible Dr. Pole, new episode Saturday at 9 on Nat Geo Wild.
Wow, <laughs> that pig seemed like she was quite a handful. Can you tell us a little bit about dealing with these pot pelly pigs? Um, working with pigs can sometimes be a little tricky. They're very intelligent animals and they're also very strong and they're very loud. Dad, yeah. why are pigs so loud? Because pigs are just like chickens on the bottom of the food chain. All they can run, all they can do to get away is run and squeal. So Dr. Lisa, it seems you really do need to be prepared for anything working at the clinic. What do you like most about working at PBS? Well, I feel like every single day I learn something new, whether it's a new technique or uh, a new problem that I'm trying to solve with a patient. Um, it's every day I'm not bored, and that's what I was looking for in a job. So. Yes. I'm stretched and I learn every day, and uh, that's been my favorite part. Well, it's an honor to have you as part of the team, Dr. Lisa. Thanks for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Lisa. And thanks for having me. It was fun being here. Subscribe here to Dr. Pole Presents to watch even more content coming your way soon.